and welcome to my uh, my YouTube channel here, where I like to do a diverse amount of different things from cooking recipes to eye health, since I am an eye doctor, uh, to my other specialty is I've been carnivore for over 14 years, and I love, love just expressing my passion about it to try to help as many as I can get to ideal body weight and ideal health. So I'm going to jump right in here. I'm going to take this. Uh, let's get this off of here and go in full screen. Okay. So as a lot of you know, there's been a lot of talk and chatter about this sardine challenge and the sardine fast and everybody's kind of going a little sardine crazy. And for me, the reason why I am continuing to beat that drum is the summer challenge groups that I have, I am just blown away at how uh, effective and it's not just the sardine challenge and I'm not making everybody do a sardine challenge every week, but this weight loss and health challenge incorporates a lot of different aspects of what in my experience, in my opinion, leads to weight loss. And if you stick around to the end after the recipe, I'm going to share um, a, a few different things about the whole weight loss aspect because Trust me, I'm not here to um, just do clickbait and try to get people to think that this is the next best cabbage soup diet. I am so not there with any of this. I am just like literally so thrilled that so many people practically in tears who have been on weight loss stalls for months and years who are down six pounds, 12 pounds, fitting in smaller dress sizes. And so I'm just, I just want to keep the momentum going and help as many as I can. So, all right, I'm going to jump into the um, sardine and salmon patties. Now, the reason why, and, and I'm going to tell you for sure, with this situation with the sardines, and you all know, I'm not like this major, major, huge sardine lover. And I've kind of warmed up to these magical fishies just over time with what I am seeing that they've done for both me and for so many that I am helping to get weight off and see the scale number dropping. Uh, now, I want you to be able to start thinking the way I do and cooking the way I cook. Um, not that you have to, but I am very much one who gets an idea of things that should go together and start improvising things. So I'm just going to start off with, I am going to make this in my KitchenAid mixer and we're going to start off with two tins of sardines. Now I'm going to also bring up that these sardines I got yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday at Walmart for, I think these were 92 cents. Uh, the Walmart brand, which I have heard is really good. Uh, these were a dollar two. So figure that the season brand beat out Walmart in pricing, but ridiculously inexpensive. So there's a major plus for these magical fishies. Um, so first thing we're going to do, I'll just open these because it's going to be a little easier, is put two cans of sardines because I like to make more and be either able to freeze these and right out of the freezer, once you make these patties, I'm gonna show you two ways. I'm gonna make it um, in a cast iron pan and I'm also going to do it in the air fryer just so you can see if you have preference um, how they come out. But once you cook them, wrap them up, freeze them and to reheat and uh, you know, if, if you're in my challenge, you are paying close attention to what's going in the pie hole here. So we are going to um, track and weigh, but you'll be able to pull them right out of the freezer already marked and put them right into the air fryer. And I'm going to guess five minutes at 380 is going to take a frozen salmon sardine patty to delicious. So 
I always, like I said, like to sort of over make. So it's going to be, I'm going to post the whole recipe in the show notes too. And I am definitely going to scroll through all the comments and oh, Holly, thank you so much. Uh, Holly's out hiking and she's been sending me gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Um, okay. So the other thing is so you can add, and like I put in the title of this, salmon. And so I just got this wild planet. They make a really, really good, and I'll show you. I mean, look how great that looks, real solid. Um, so I'm gonna do the, the one can of salmon, two tins of sardines, but think outside the box. And that's why I'm just gonna show you Instead of the can of salmon, why not throw in a can of white crab meat? And they even have lump crab meat, like larger chunks that I would just wait till the end and just fold them in to have chunks and make kind of like a crab meat salmon patty. Um, what else? Oh, and obviously you can go the, the tuna route and do a tuna sardine patty crab you know, cake. Um, it's really, it, it's so flexible because we're going to hold this together with a couple eggs and I'm trying to purposely not do so much grated cheese in my recipes. Cause there are a lot of people who are sensitive to dairy. A lot of us who, as part of my summer challenges, I require people to come up with their own hard for their the period of the challenge i have um, some in a full summer june july august challenge and i have now two new just july and august challenges coming up so if anybody wants to join in you will get a very extensive email with step-by-step -step instructions of how we're going to go about getting uh weight off of you and i'm going to show you at the end some amazing uh testimonials of people who are just 27 days into June now and down like ridiculous, like 13 pounds in 27 days. But it's not typical, but so many people are writing in that I can't help but be so excited for so many of you who are really feeling so encouraged after feeling so discouraged. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just start throwing this all together because that's basically all you're gonna do is throw it together. And the, um, oh my, okay, you guys know how I, how I am about these. Hang on. <laughs> I know some people pick these up right out of the can and eat them. Not me. <laughs> I like to crush them and disguise them and put them into something like that to beat them up to a pulp. Um, all right, so it's gonna be these two cans and the can of salmon or crab. I'm not really sure, sorry, I'm going over to my sink. Um, why? why I chose to do the salmon. I think because that's a typical go-to for me when I make this kind of um, either crab cake or I make a cold salad. And I'm gonna show that in another video, how I make it with soft boiled eggs in with the sardines and salmon or tuna or crab. And I put like five soft boiled eggs, like just soft boiled eggs, like just barely to that perfect soft boiled. And as I'm mashing them, the yolk is sort of like the mayonnaise that holds it together. And then I'll usually put like a little pickle juice and maybe a squirt of lemon. And it's just phenomenal. All right. Oh, so what I was getting at, I'm trying to not use cheese, grated cheese as a binder for these, mainly because so many people say, I wish I could eat them, but I have a dairy intolerance. And what I was getting at before, and I just absolutely distracted myself, and you know me, <laughs> I go off on tangents, but what I was saying in the challenge groups, I require each person to choose as one of the steps, but one of the steps, choosing their own hard 
that they're giving up. Some are giving up coffee, some artificial sweeteners, some are giving up dairy, um, but it's, some are using a uh, step bet and requiring themselves to do 8,000 steps a day or whatever it is, but that's part of it. So a lot are giving up dairy because if you have any autoimmune issues whatsoever, whatsoever, arthritis, um, dry eye, uh, you name it, any sort of joint pains, skin issues, you should really attempt to give up all dairy and that includes heavy cream in your coffee. That includes all cheese um, as, an, as a trial, as an elimination to try to get to the root cause of what's happening. So, all right. Um, you know what? The one not so great thing about, I'm attempting to do my YouTube lives um, in a different way so I have access, but, uh, it's not on my phone. I can't carry the phone around, but so that looks great. It's just kind of pulverized into a nice um, kind of great ground fish kind of thing. So I'm going to put in two eggs, two tablespoons of softened butter. I'm just going to start throwing this stuff in here. So that was two tablespoons of softened butter. And when I get really fancy, I'm going to figure this all out and upgrade to the point where I can have two cameras and I will have a split screen and you will see a close up, but I'm not there yet. I'm trying. Uh, okay. I really like, and you can make your own pork rind crumbs, but pork and good makes a Cajun one. They make, um, I think a ranch one, an Italian one. It's just so easy. I really like the consistency of, of their pre-ground pork rinds. I just keep it in my refrigerator. You don't have to. I don't know why I do it. I just do. Um, maybe I just somehow think maybe it just stays fresher longer. I don't know. But I have already measured out a quarter cup of these. And we're going to just, I just keep it on low. Just keep mixing it in. I'm going to do the pork rinds and the two eggs and i love if you've watched me before you know i love old bay seasoning i happen to also really really love and put on so many things in so many dishes on almost everything is the redmond's organic season salt and it's the combination. Now, I know it's not pure carnivore, and some of you just use salt, and hooray, that's awesome. Some don't tolerate. Um, Holly Redmond season salt is very tasty. Oh, so you're talking about it in there already. I love this stuff. I'm going to put a link to it so you have to get a little discount if you want to try it. I literally, I have the big one of it. I like it so much on everything, on eggs, on steak, on ground beef in my sardine bisque that I make, you name it. You know, I use this a lot, but it's because I really, truly adore it, <laughs> like big time. Um, another thing that I love that a lot of people have mentioned to me that they were so thankful I showed them, but my little magnetic um, uh, measuring spoons are so great. You just stick them back together. It has a little leveler on top, all magnetic just sits in your drawer without getting tossed around. Um, so I measured out two tablespoons of mustard. Yes, I know, not fully carnivore. I tolerate mustard. I love mustard. I don't binge on mustard. Mustard's A-OK -okay for me. It's basically mustard seed, vinegar, water, and some spices. So uh, we're going to put that in. And now I am going to go back on what I just said, uh, only because I'm going to put this in here, but you can stop right there. And I'm going to show you how awesome this is kind of looking. And you can just, we're going to make a patty out of this. Look how nice that's formed. Um, you can make it into little balls and put it in the air fryer. I'm going to make patties for the cast iron and I'm going to make, um, I'm probably going to make little, um, balls 
or large balls into the air fryer. Um, okay, so what I was going to say is I am, for this one, going to add just two ounces of goat cheese. Goat cheese has some pretty neat qualities to it, a side, different than... Um, different than cow cheese and I haven't tried it with the goat cheese. So I'm just experimenting and that's why I just want to, not that you have to cook the way I cook, but I think it is um, really good to just go with the flow and just go with how you're feeling. Now I don't add like extra pepper. I kind of just stay away from just outright adding pepper just because pepper is high in oxalates and blah, blah, blah. And there is in here salt, garlic, onion, coriander, mustard, celery seed, black pepper, uh, paprika, turmeric, and parsley. So you've got a little pepper from, this is that Redmond season salt. Although in this recipe today, I put Old Bay in and I only put that in just because that is what usually comes to mind for most people for a seafood seasoning. I'm going to go in my other cabinet here or maybe I'm not. Oh, I already took it out. You can do anything like here. I have just this general herbs for seafood thing. Go ahead, play around with it. Toss in whatever your favorite is. You can at this point also take some hot sauce and just add some hot sauce in there to give it a kick. All right, so I'm going to get this heated up and we're gonna start off. Oh, so I know out now is, um, there's that Wagyu uh, spray. I happen to have a duck fat spray. I'll put a link, uh, you can get it on Amazon. You can probably get it also at Walmart, but um, there's no propellant in it. And it literally is just a nice little layer of duck fat. And I love having something like that because, you know, butter has that lower smoking point. It um, burns easily. Duck fat works really good. That Wagyu tallow spray. I don't, I didn't get that um, mainly because I've had the duck fat. It works really, really well. Um, so you just are going to spray that and let me, I'm going to make little patties here. I'm just going to make like four, I'll just do three in here. Hang on. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. Literally, I just have them sitting right in there, right on that heated uh, duck fat. And let's get... I'm gonna do the air fryer at 380. It's probably gonna be about 10 to 12 minutes. I will put um, all of this information in the notes so that it'll be really easy for you. Okay, yep, how do I get the recipe here? Oh, look, here, I can do this fancy little thing. <laughs> how do you get the recipe? I'm going to actually type it into the description. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, you know what? I just read here this can't find sriracha in, I guess you're in Minnesota shortage. I have heard now, if any of you have uh, been a very big fan of, I'm going to get out of my fridge. Of this particular brand of sriracha. I, yes, I have heard that there is, you, you can't get it in the stores anymore. It's like crazy something some issue with a shortage of a certain type of pepper that they use but dang that stuff is so good and if you find some buy it up uh all right let's do 
I'm gonna say now, can you guys hear me okay? Because I actually have, um, here, I'll show you a little of the behind the scenes. I actually have a little microphone sitting on my counter, hoping that the audio would be better than projecting, having to project into my laptop that I have mounted up on a big box here. Uh, but, all right, we can get, There we go. Um, so let me get the ones into the air fryer, and then I'm going to take some of your comments and questions. Okay. And you see how I'm literally just taking it off of, I know, sorry, it's a little far away there, but that's good enough. all right so that says 13 minutes that's really enough all right now so that i don't i'm gonna try to show you these as i do this Ooh, look at that. Mm. Now, we don't have to be like so concerned with cooking these to well done. Uh, you know, you literally, I sometimes I eat raw eggs. It does, it's never killed me before. I eat raw yolks all the time. Um, I am going to cook that though. I mean, don't make it, I'm not going to make it sound like you're eating raw eggs in this thing, but I don't like mine dried out. Let's just put it that way. And I will undercook mine. I am not suggesting that for anybody out there. I'm just telling you what I have always done and what I will do. So this will be interesting because I have not done these in the air fryer before. So this will be interesting just to see um, how that comes out. All right. So let me, uh, you can see me put in the egg. Yeah. I just, I was fast. I dumped in the two tablespoons of softened butter, the two eggs, two tablespoons of mustard, teaspoon of old bay. What else? A quarter cup of pork rinds. I'm just reading through here now. And I did two ounces of goat cheese, totally optional, but I will put all of that in there. But yeah, I dumped it in there. You got eggs are important to find it. So I'm really sorry for uh, people who can't eat eggs. You are pretty much down to the lion diet. If you're no, no dairy, no egg, then we need to just smoke and grill meat for you. And I'm going to do that too, because I'm going to be getting a new smoker and I'm going to show you some pretty awesome recipes with that. Um, all right, let me go through now that I'm going to get, I'm just going to actually, I'll let the air fryer ones go for about five or six minutes and then I will check on them and cross my fingers. And these in my book are pretty much almost done. So and there you have it. And totally totally easy. I mean, how easy it's like, it's like that sardine bisque or that I like to call seafood bisque now. Cause gosh, I, now I'm up to doing mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and cod livers in my immersion blended soup. It's just spectacular. Um, but look how easy that was literally just toss that stuff together. Um, like I said, if you're going to do the crab meat, I would do it all the way up to the end and then put the crab in last and kind of just fold it in so you get nice chunks of crab because we don't need to pulverize the crab. I like to pulverize the sardines to make them unidentifiable, but crab I like. Crab I could eat in chunks like 
absolutely delicious. Um, all right, so I am going to, okay, so now I'm going to get back to what I put on the, uh, what did I, what did I write on here? Let's see. I put, uh, yeah, weight loss magic. So, so that this doesn't come across as total clickbait ish stuff here. Let me see if I can get me a little bit smaller. Um, this is, I'm going to go this way. Guys, I have huge news. This morning I weighed in at 159. So this is somebody that's in my current group. I've never seen this number in my life, middle school maybe, not surgery, not bad diets, not TV shows, not Noom got me here. This summer challenge got me there and we are only a month in. <sighs> Weight loss in the past 27 days is 13 pounds. Ketones are up and blood sugars down. This really works. So now let me just back up and say, this isn't easy. And I tell people, if this was really easy, everybody would have a flat stomach. And so you have to be willing to make change to make a change because what we've been doing hasn't been working. So let's go on to um, normal morning glucose is in the upper 70s to low 80s. I'm down 22 pounds since June 7th. And that's delightful. My husband has decided to join in, which that's an even more amazing thing because it's so important that you have support at home. And I went through a tough time having no support when I came to this. So I can really relate to people who are having trouble with that. Okay, this is another. These are comments in the private WhatsApp chat that everybody is joined into every day. Good morning. Just wanted to say hi. I think I'm finally adjusting to mornings without coffee. So this person decided for their heart to give up coffee. They're continuing to see great blood pressure readings and happy about that. So there's all different aspects to this that are not just um, like something that everybody has to do. I make this really flexible. I'm not dogmatic. If you're keto, great. Oh, and speaking of that, as being keto, you could also, uh, here we go, as a keto person into those uh, salmon sardine cakes, do these dehydrated onion flakes, uh, something like that, and put that in there, you know, make this your own and make it how you um, prefer. Just listen to Dr. Lisa's talk for Carnivore Summit. So good. Feel so lucky to be in this challenge all summer. Can't believe I stopped my weight loss stall and I'm feeling so good. Do my measurements on Friday. Past week lost eight inches and two and a half pounds. Total lost date 21 inches and 10 and a half pounds. Feeling really happy with my results. Wouldn't be here without Dr. Lisa and all of you because everybody else in the group, that's what makes this so powerful is being assigned all of these steps that I give you at the very beginning, taking it upon yourself to decide um, what you're going to do and then have the support and the encouragement and really the accountability partners of others in the group. So I know I'm, I, I know like I'm tooting my horn. I'm not here to be a salesman, but I just want so many of you to experience success. Just weighed myself after a week of being out of town and working really hard on getting my numbers in line. I'm down six pounds. I haven't been able to get the scale moving in the right direction all year. So pleased to get some positive reinforcement. Sardines for the win. I think I chopped that off a little. Next person says I lost two and a half pounds, raised ketones to 3.6 and had low morning glucose readings. I'm in a wedding tomorrow and I'm now officially under my goal weight and fitting in my dress. How awesome is that? Happiest Friday. So now this is another part of the challenge I'm talking about, the step bet, which I highly encourage but don't require people to do. Last week when we started, I thought my goals were too high. I did that was her step goal she thought was high. I decided to embrace this challenge, strict carnivore and step bed for six weeks because my scale has not moved for months. Today, I am down five pounds. It's working. Thank you, Dr. Lisa. I'll take the, I'll take the compliments, trust me. I, I work hard to try to get you all to drop weight. All right, I love this, love, love, love this saying. It's doing what most people don't and most people won't 
that will get you to your goals. And you have to really think long and hard. I have so many people who come to me and say, oh, if I have to give up coffee, I might as well just shoot myself right now. And it's just somebody who's just not willing to try to make a change um, that might be the one thing that's most holding them back. And other people say, I can't give up my Diet Coke or my chewing gum or my fill in the blank. And to that, I say, don't come into my challenge because if you're not willing to do something hard, you're not willing to, and trust me, change is hard because our bodies and our minds like comfort and we like familiarity and we like patterns and we like our habits. All of those things <laughs> brought you to where you're at and keep keeping you where you're at. And if you want to make the change, you have to get a little uncomfortable and do something hard. So, um, yeah, I say, you know me, suck it up, buttercup. We're in for the ride. And I am just so excited for those that are in my three month, June, July, August challenge. We are one month in and so excited to see what the second and third month bring. And anybody else um, can still join in. And I just formed two new groups that are July and August challenges. And segueing off of that, because I've had people say, I don't want this to stop. I need this to last through the holidays. I have a carb sober holiday group that's September through December. And that is to get us literally through the holidays, hopefully, and probably if you're willing to do the work, weighing less on December 31st than you did on Labor Day weekend. So it's all in how, how badly you want it and how much of a uh, challenge you're willing to put yourself up to. So, all right, let's check the air fryer ones. And these actually look really, I'm not even really going to flip these at all because I'm already seeing that they're just like a nice little plump crumpet there. And that's it. That So those only really went for, that was it really only went for about 12 minutes and I probably, since I made these kind of small, um, for me, cause I like things undercooked. <laughs> um, that was probably too much time, but I actually, actually it's, it's fine. Um, it's really good. I, mm, I, and I think it would be really fun to play around doing it with crab, maybe even do two cans of crab and um, two of sardines or, you know, play around this. This isn't like critical, like a cake or a cookie recipe where it's like, got to have kind of just the right ratios on these things. These, as long as you have, enough egg to bind it together, it will hold it together. Um, you don't want to do too much pork rind because then it will start falling apart, but really, really pretty simple. So, all right. Um, let me just look in here for, okay. Is it too late to join the challenge? No, no, no. Actually I put, if you scroll up, I put the link right up in this chat. Um, and I'll also put the link in the bottom, but I have a whole, new group of people that are going to within uh, one or two days going to get my very, very extensive welcome email that outlines step by step everything that you are going to be doing. And it will outline your first um, 72 hour challenge that we're going to do to get things started and moving. And then our first live zoom meeting is all about discussing this entire challenge and um, depends on how it falls. Let me just see the, the date, um, how July is going to fall because I have, um, uh, let me pull up, not have my head in your face. So July, um, 
I have a group on a Wednesday evening and Sunday evening are the two new ones of all new people coming into the challenge. You can also join into the existing June, July, August challenge where you will still get that entire um, step-by-step -step welcome email that's going to get your um, journey started with this. But what will happen is since Wednesday is July 5th, I dictate, but it's flexible for me, I prefer Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as the 72-hour first challenge. That's going to be July 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Yes, right through the holiday where there's going to be barbecues and picnics. And you can figure out how to make it work because there's lots of options for the challenges. I don't, you do not have to do a sardine challenge at all. Um, there's other uh, challenges that are in there. So, um, but yeah, so then in the welcome, it will designate the third, fourth, and fifth would be my preferred uh, challenge start for you. And then the fifth would be the night of that meeting. And then even if you're in the Sunday group, we do the same thing. It's flexible. You can do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you want as your challenge, if that works in your schedule. But um, week by week, we will uh, go through what's happening and what's working and where people are finding their success. Okay. Um, let me see. Oh, okay. Let's see. So I'll be joining the Carb Sober. I turned 40 in March and I've got goals. Don't want to hit the ditch after the summer is over. Yeah. And, you know, I, I call it the excuse trifecta, the, uh, and I, the trifecta meaning Halloween, Thanksgiving, and the Christmas holidays that everybody's little ditch demon up there just makes an excuse and says, uh, you know what? I'm just going to give myself permission. I've been so good. I need permission. You don't need permission to go back down into the dang carb ditch and spend weeks or months there gaining weight before you claw your way back out. That is just the surefire way to nowhere uh, other than that same yo-yo roller coaster you've been on. And that's why I say consistency is key. We can't keep allowing ourselves to um, fall back into our old habits because then we fall back into our old body. And then that body just keeps getting sicker and sicker. And that's what we're, we are up against. And I say, draw the line in the sand. Abstinence is the key. Addictions love isolation. The opposite of addiction is pulling yourself up and getting into a group and talking with people every week. It, it's just... It's really, really empowering. And I know I don't want to sound like I'm doing a sales pitch because I'm not. I just truly want to help as many as I can. And um, I just feel so amazing that so many people are having so much success. And uh, there's a link in this chat. Yes, I put it. Let me just scroll back up. Um, I thought I put it right up at the. Yeah, I put it up in the. Here, I'll just put it in right down here right now because it's fast enough for me to do that. Um, I think I just did that, did I? Yes. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's just, I, I think for how long I have been speaking with people for how long They've been frustrated with not being able to get the scale to move. And for all, and I'm not to say that this is going to be the magic elixir for everybody. Some people might have some serious gut issues that they need to heal, but I'm going to tell you there's certain things that we should and could and need to do all along anyway. Um, and I go into that in the um, welcome email as far as the, the weight training. And I'm going to I'll link to watching the video I did with Fred Hahn last week. Um, oh gosh, I actually totally forgot. I just saw this on my counter. One of you amazing followers, Christina, I don't know if you're there, sent me a gift and I forgot to put, I had it out to put it on, but what an awesome sardine apron. <laughs> so there you go. Um, now I'm all set. <laughs> uh, 
and thank you, Christina, if you're watching for sending this awesome gift. Um, just got a Costco member. Is the Carb Sober Challenge there? Yes. So um, at that link is everything. There is the uh, summer challenge, the July and August ones, and you can even still join into the June, July, August one if um, those days work better. And I will actually, you need to be discounted one of the months off of that. So it gets a little complicated, but basically there's two July and August ones right now. And there's, I think, four different choices for the carb sober holidays, uh, which run September through December. Okay. All right. I'm going to pop off here now. And thank you so much for joining. And I hope that, you know, for me, the, these kind of sardine, salmon, crab meat, cake things, it's all for making this more sustainable because like, you know me, I don't want to just keep opening the can and feeling I got to put it on a plate and eat the fish. That works great at the beginning. And I actually really do strongly encourage everybody to do a straight out full on uh, sardine challenge. Well, I did it with mashing it in a pan of a tablespoon of butter when I did it and a little hot sauce. But you know what I'm saying, not doing the, the cakes or the um, what I do now, which is make the sardine salad, but I'm doing it because going forward, this is going to be a really, really usable, uh, tool for how nutritious they are, how inexpensive they are, how amazing the glucose and ketones numbers respond to it. And, um, and also for the weight loss that you don't have to go hungry. That is so key that we are not starving ourselves. We are not fasting, although you can water fast if you want. That is an option. We're not here to just say, OK, just keep starving yourself and you'll lose weight. That's not what I'm doing at all. And because that's not sustainable. And that's not to say some people are jumping in and shaking things up and trying maybe two days of a sardine fast and one day water or whatever it is. But um, it really has to be where you're going to make it by understanding how your body responds to what you're doing. And that's why I'm very, very, I'm, I am adamant about certain things in the challenge and that welcome email. And you will see exactly which ones that are strongly encouraged and which ones are a deal breaker. You have to do it as far as setting your personal hard, which is that picking that one thing that you think is probably holding you back, but is the one thing you have not given up yet because you don't want to, is the thing that you are going to give up for a period of time so that you can learn from it and figure out for yourself how most people end up saying, you know what, I made it through a week and now I don't really even miss it. So there's revelations like that that have to come about by actually pushing yourself. And that's what this is all about. Pushing yourself in an environment where there's a lot of other people doing hard things and chatting with you um, on a daily basis in the private chat and then coming into the weekly lives to uh, discuss it. And I'm so, so happy so many of you are having success. And I would love to meet more and more of you. I, I actually, it would I could really hang over here and answer some more of your questions, but um, I am going to uh, sign off because I know these lives get really long. And when somebody clicks on to want to watch a sardine uh, salmon patty recipe and they see it's an hour long, they're like, yeah, I don't need to cook for an hour. But meanwhile, it was uh, 10 minutes from start to finish to make that, well, other than the cooking. So, all right. Thanks for joining. I am going to, oh, just so that you know, coming up, I think it's July 11th, because you know I'm live every Tuesday night on, I think it's the 11th. Yes. Um, I have Dr. Chris Kenobi coming on with me. So it will be two eye doctors talking about how to save your vision and never lose your vision for the rest of your life. It's going to be a great discussion. So mark the uh, Tuesday the 11th for that. And um, 
We'll see you then. I'll see you next week. I don't know what's planned for next week yet, but I'll figure it out. Bye.